Welcome back to Beginning Sock Knitting with the Twisted Skein. I'm your instructor, Amanda Swanson, and today we're going to talk about fixing common errors in knitted socks. So we're going to talk about the ways to fix some problems while you're knitting, some of them as soon as you discover the problem, and some of them if the problems happened a while ago. Um, I wanted to show you some of the tools that I use when I fix things. Um, things that can be very helpful are these bulb safety pins. You can use these to secure drop stitches or things that might escape while you work. Double pointed needles. These are handy for sliding either your extra stitches on um, or re-knitting a section if you have to drop down a whole section and fix it. Um, I like to have ones a little smaller than what I'm working on because it's easier to get in and out of the fabric. A small crochet hook. You can also use a knitter's handy tool. That's a tool that has a crochet hook at one end and sort of a pointed stylet at the other end. And it's also handy for grabbing stitches or putting them back in place. The other thing that's helpful is a tapestry needle. This one I've threaded with contrast yarn so you can see what I'm doing. But you'll want to try and use the same yarn you use for your socks or something in the same color. In a real pinch, if you don't have any yarn, um, a couple strands of heavy thread could work as well in a color that'll hide inside your sock. So the first error I have to show you here is probably the most common, and this is a drop stitch. Drop stitches can happen to anybody. Either you set your knitting down and your needle slides and your stitch escapes, or you are working on double pointed needles and it's easy to drop a stitch off the back end of your needle when you're working on the front end. Um, your cat gets a hold of your project or your dog takes your needles out, or you just lose one and don't know when it happened. So the first thing I want to do is I want to take this drop stitch and I want to secure it so it doesn't escape any farther. I'm going to put a bulb safety pin through it to hold on to it and make sure that it doesn't run away. This one looks pretty straightforward. I can see my stitch. It fell down through my work. It doesn't look like I've worked past it because I have space to pick it up here. So I'm going to go ahead and take my crochet hook and I'm going to grab this and I like to spread my stitches apart here so that I can see I'm picking up the correct rung of the ladder at a time. And I'm just going to pull that yarn through the stitch on my crochet hook. And I'm just going to repeat that all the way up the rungs of the ladder. Make sure you're getting them in order. Make sure they're not crossed or twisted in any way. If you have questions about if you're picking up the right one, you can always go to the side and look and see that you're picking up the next one in the sequence. Okay, last one. I've picked all those back up. I can take my safety pin out now. And it looks just as good as new. No fuss, no muss. All right, over here, we have a little bit different problem. I can see that I have a dropped stitch, and it has a hole, and I see this a lot, but I don't have a row of stitches above it, a little row of rungs that I can pick up. But looking at it very carefully, I can see what happened. And it looks like what happened is the stitch got dropped, but somehow I, when I made the next row, I was able to work that yarn into another stitch. So I'm not really missing a stitch, but this drop stitch will open out and create a hole and a run down my sock if I don't fix it. There are two ways I can fix this stitch. I'm going to show you the first one, and that's to pick it up. If you have a short distance to travel, this is probably the easiest. It's also going to be the one that you're going to notice the least. So we're going to do this first. I'm going to go ahead and secure this stitch so it doesn't go anywhere else with a bulb marker. Um, if I were in the middle of knitting, I would slip these stitches on either side of it onto my double pointed needles so that they don't go anywhere. There's one side and there's the other side. All right, now I'm going to focus just on this stitch in the center, and I'm going to drop this back down one stitch at a time using my crochet hook. Just pop those stitches out until I get down to where the problem started. Mm. 
Okay, last one. That yarn that was twisted has now untwisted itself. And I've got my stitch here. It doesn't look like anything's lost or broken. So I'm going to go ahead and ladder back up the same as I did last time. And we're all the way back up, and I can put it back on my needles. And I'm ready to carry on working. All right. But as I said, there's another way to fix this too. And I'll come back and show you a separate second method for this that may work if you've dropped the stitch and it's been several inches, or perhaps you dropped it before you did the heel. I'll show you another way to fix it. All right, I have here the same stitch that we had before. You can see I've secured it with a locking stitch marker. And again, I have a hole and the stitch above it is twisted. It's not like I'm short a stitch, but the stitch is going to come loose and create a larger opening if I don't fix it. I'm gonna show you a different way to fix this now. And that's by using duplicate stitch. So what I have is I have yarn on a tapestry needle. I want to make sure that the stitch I'm working with is not twisted in any way. I'm going to come in from behind the stitch and I'm going to come up and I'm going to make a replica of this stitch here that's twisted. So I'm going to go behind both legs of the stitch above it, pull my yarn through, I'm leaving a little tail here that I can use to weave my ends in, and I'm going to go back down into the dropped stitch and I'm going to take my yarn behind my work. Okay, Pull that through. Let me take out the stitch marker so you can see what I've done. Okay, I have created a duplicate stitch here, and that's going to keep this dropped stitch from running away and making a hole in my work. I'm going to use my crochet hook to pull that other leg the tail here back behind my work. All right, and then I can go to the inside of my work and I can weave my ends in so that they don't come out. And I'm going to want to duplicate stitch <clears throat> in the back here, following the pattern of my knitting. Do that a couple of times and I would repeat that for the other leg and you'll find one and then you can trim those off and then when you open it back out you'll hardly be able to see anything. It's a little bit of texture here where I did the weaving in but overall it's a really neat fix that you won't see afterwards. Um, if you were doing it on the sole of a sock I would perhaps try and drop back down and ladder that stitch back up, but um, in a pinch this will do and it'll kind of felt into your yarn and it'll be fine. All right, and then I have another kind of common error over here. Let's see if we can figure out what happened here. So I have this stitch, but it doesn't look right, and I see this all the time. I've done it myself. Um, if I look at this stitch here, the stitch looks fine stitch above it looks fine, but this stitch here is wonky and if I pull back my yarn I can see what happened is that I only caught one of the three plies of yarn in the stitch. So it's not truly a drop stitch, it's a split stitch. And so just like we did before, we're just going to ladder back down. I don't need to put a safety pin in it because it's secured by the stitch that it's through because that yarn is twisted together but not all of it. I can see here I got part of the strand, but not all of it. So on this, you want to be really careful. You can use your tapestry needle or maybe one of your double pointed needles to make sure that you have gotten all of the strands of that stitch before you put it on your crochet hook. Once I'm sure I've got all the strands opened out, I can go ahead and ladder this one back up as well.
and that's fixed. No more blip. Here's a little trickier problem. I've got a dropped stitch, but this dropped stitch doesn't have any ladder above it for me to pick up. And I don't, I didn't, unlike the other one, accidentally make a new stitch. So I'm going to have to do something to fix this stitch. I'm going to show you a couple different options. I'm going to move my yarn over to my extra double pointed needle over here until I get to right above the stitch. And I can see I don't have a lot of space for a ladder, but I might be able to make a ladder for this stitch if I coax these apart. Okay, again, you want to secure it with your safety pin, grab it with your crochet hook, don't let it drop out. And let's see if I can make enough space for a stitch here. I'm looking for ladder rungs. That one's wanting to split on me. Got to take all of it. As I said, sometimes you have to coax that yarn out, make sure it's not twisted. Pick up the next ladder rung and pick up the next ladder rung. And this gets really tight because I didn't really have enough yarn to do this, but I can save the stitch this way. Okay, and I've gotten this back up to the top. I can go ahead and mount this back on my knitting needle and I can carry on knitting. It's a little bit tight because as I said, I did not have space to make this stitch. Okay, and you can see it looks just a little bit strained there but you can do it and it will work. And you can even use your um, double point needle or your tapestry needle to coax some extra yarn toward that stitch so that you can spread your stitch tension out. So I could do this by tugging from one leg to the next of the stitches next to it. This is called finessing your yarn. And you can do this with all kinds of things to even out your tension just to make that stitch have a little more space in it, and that can really help it out. And I can do that for each of the rows. All right, that's one method. The other thing I sometimes do if I don't have space, and I've told people to do this if it's a really long way down, and you don't have space in your yarn, what I like to do is I like to secure that stitch, and then I take the stitch next to it, and drop that stitch down. You see I'm taking the... Okay, until I get to the stitch that's on the same level. Then what I do is I take those two stitches together. Make sure they're not twisted. And I do the equivalent of a slip slip knit or a knit two together. This one's going to be a knit two together so that I can use those stitches and use the ladder from the stitch I dropped down to bring those together into one stitch. I'm going to have to take my bulb pin out here. And now I'm just going to ladder up. where that stitch was. And you can see I'm not fighting how tight it was there. And so it may look a little messy here, but it's not bad overall. Some of that space is caused by the fact that I'd already picked this stitch up once, but I can coax these legs out, spread that yarn out. And in the long run, that doesn't create any extra bump in your fabric. You won't notice anything extra there and you'll save your stitch from dropping down. So as I said, if it's a long way back, that's what I recommend doing if you don't have the space to make a ladder to pick that stitch up. 
just knit two together or slip slit knit with its neighboring stitch and then ladder them both back up the ladder that belongs to the stitch next to it. All right. I wanted to show you a couple of the common mistakes that are made in making and picking up the heel flap. You can see on this sock, I had had those nice big slip stitches that I could easily pick up as I was picking up my stitches on the side of my gusset, but I come here and I find I don't have those nice big stitches. It looks like something didn't get slipped. So what I want to do is I want to look very carefully at where those stitches should have been. So I've picked up the stitch for these two rows here. I'm gonna come up and pick up this slip stitch here, which also covers two rows of knitting. So that one's pretty obvious. But then when I get here, it becomes less obvious. I want to pick up one stitch for every two rows. So I see a stitch here, I'm gonna skip it. I see a stitch here. I'm going to come out here and pick up this stitch. Yeah, right there. On that edge. And it looks like I may have a missed one in the row above as well. So I'm also going to come in and pick up this stitch. Picking up the same two legs. And then I have one more stitch here I'm going to pick up. Now, the other thing I'm starting to look at is I'm gonna have quite a gap in this space going from my heel gusset to the top of my sock. So there are a couple things you can do. I can pick up, most people wanna pick up that stitch. Well, I'll show you what happens if you pick up that stitch and put it on your needle. What you do is you make that hole bigger. I don't wanna do that. So there are a couple things you can do. You can twist that stitch and work through it. So I can put it on my needle like so, and I can knit through it, twisting it to close that gap. And that'll make less of a hole in the work. Or the other thing I can do is I can pick up a stitch in this hole next to it. It kind of incorporates that stitch and is also going to help close that gap. Now looking at the sort of hole I'm getting from that, I think that's still gonna make a little bit of a hole. So I'm gonna go ahead and I'm going to do the twisted stitch method. And this is just gonna be one more stitch I'm gonna to have to decrease when I come back along my sock, but it'll keep me from having as much of a gap there where I change from stitch to stitch. All right, so those are a couple of the things that you can fix now while you're picking up your heel. Now here's something I think every Magic Loop knitter has done at one time or another in their career. You're knitting along and you hear a click and you realize that your second circular needle has fallen on the floor because you have knit right off it. Now it's one thing if you've got your needles both going, you have all your stitches on one needle going this way, but this is a different problem. You can see I've got my needles going two directions. How do I get back to where I started? Well, I'm going to want to take my second circular needle and I'm going to want to very carefully slide my stitches onto it. And I can see that my working yarn is over here, or perhaps if I'm going this way, I've worked over here, but I want to get back to where my working yarn is. So I have a tip here, and if I slide it onto this circular needle, I can get my stitches going the right direction again and have two needles. But as they sit right now, I can't knit this way. I'll just slide these back to the other side. And it would be perfectly okay to slide the stitches from this needle onto your circular needle as well because you can always pull your needle through until you get the tip you need to the end. So I'll just fix this and we'll be back to look at some other problems. Here's another thing that knitters find. You're knitting along on your socks and you realize you've gotten to the end of your yarn ball. What are you gonna do? Well, there's a very simple and elegant solution and that is contrast heels and toes. Some people do these intentionally. Some people do them because they're using up scrap yarn, but you can always knit your heels and or your toes out of a different color of yarn. You just want it to be the same weight as the yarn you're working with already. And you want it to have 
similar fiber content, although it's not strictly necessary. You know, you can be off a few percentage here or there. If you have like a 50% wool, 50% nylon yarn, you'd probably want to stick with that. But the one that I have in the background is 100% merino, and the one I have here, I think, is a 75% wool, 25% nylon. Either of those are okay. They go well together. They're a similar weight, and I have enough yarn to knit a whole sock. And my heels and toes would be easy to change out if I were to get a hole in one or the other. It would be really easy to see where I needed to pick up my stitches. I could unpick this heel. This is different heel than the one we learned in this class, but either one would be an easy heel to unpick and re-knit in a different color of yarn to extend the life of your socks. So that's a really easy way to fix that problem. If you want to avoid that problem in the when you start knitting, you could measure, weigh your sock yarn on a kitchen scale, make note of how much yarn you have in a whole ball, and then you can divide your yarn into two equal balls so that you know if you finish your first sock, you should have enough yarn left in your second ball for your second sock. And you can use any kitchen scale or postal scale for that. Um, I like to weigh my yarn in grams, but it's an easy way to make sure I have enough yarn to finish my project and know if I'm gonna have to use a different color for my heels and toes before I finish. Sometimes in sock knitting, you don't realize what your problem is until you've finished your sock and you give it to the person you've knitted the socks for and they try to put the sock on and you realize that your bind off was too tight to fit over their foot or up their calf or it squeezes uncomfortably. You always want to try and avoid this problem when you cast your socks on in the first place by following the tips I gave you in your cast on video, making sure you leave space between the stitches. Don't make your cast on too tight. Use a nice flexible um, cast on. But sometimes, despite your best intentions, you have too tight a cast on. Um, it is possible to go back and fix it. It's not going to look as pretty as what we did at the beginning, um, but we can go back and fix it. So I'm going to show you how to take out your cast on and rework it. Okay, so I started picking it back here. Um, the important thing is to take your yarn tail from your cast on and start following it back through your work. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to take a tapestry needle and some waste yarn and I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to put these stitches on my waste yarn and I can actually at this point see the row that I'm going to be picking up and so I can make what's called a lifeline by going through each, the right leg of each stitch and picking it up and then I can hold it on this yarn while I undo the cast on, being very careful not to split the stitches. I can do this all the way around. If I do this, my stitches will be secure. You split the stitches you may find it hard to pull the yarn out later um, and then once I have this edge pick taken out I can go ahead and slide these stitches from my lifeline onto my knitting needles so that I can work this bind off now the important thing to remember is when I knitted this piece I was knitting in this direction So really, my stitches are kind of upside down, and we'll have to work with that. But, um, and so we're going to pretend now that they're going the other direction, and we're going to do a bind off. You will find, if you count your stitches carefully, that you have one less stitch than you had going the other direction. That's okay. Um, stitch count isn't crucial here. Um, and if you have done, as you probably should have at the top of a sock, a um, ribbing, you'll find that the stitches you're picking up don't look like the knits and purls you were expecting, but we can make this work. All right, so all I'm doing here is following the yarn. I'm going to use my tapestry needle here to follow it through and unpick it. I can see this was a twisted German cast on, I believe, but I can see the yarn comes through here, through the top of that stitch. 
through the top of that stitch and I can unpick it. And I'm going to do this all the way around following that yarn back. And that's the second. Remember how we had the slingshot cast on with the two tails of yarn? This is the second tail. This is the one tail that I worked and then this is the second tail that I held that I wrapped the yarn around. So we're going to pick this back all the way and I'll come back and show you what I've got when I'm done unpicking it. All right, so I'm back with the top of my sock. I have picked out all of that cast on, and as you can see, that loop went away. It was part of the tail. As I said, it was all held together, you know, in that slingshot. So that first loop was at the beginning, and that's what gave me the doubled yarn. But it all came out when I picked it out. You want to make sure that all of your stitches are in the same row, that you don't have one dropped anywhere. You'd want to fix that if you did. Make sure all of your stitches are secure. I have taken the yarn that I unraveled from the top and I ran it under the my iron on the steam setting. You could also hold it over your boiling tea kettle. Just steam that yarn out a little bit so it gets out the extra kinks. I'm going to go ahead and slide these stitches back onto my double pointed needles and I'm just inserting my needle through the center of those stitches, making sure that I'm mounting them correctly and then I will be binding them off again. Okay, and I'm just going to put a few aside here so I can show you. I'm going to pull out my lifeline there. Okay, so I have these stitches now on my needle. I've got my yarn tail here. Now, in order to do this bind off, you need about three times the amount of yarn that you have in the length of stitches around your top of your sock. So I checked. I should have enough yarn to be able to complete this bind off if you don't get a new piece of yarn or if you had to cut it in order to get it out. Get a new piece of yarn that's the same color and use that instead. You'll just have a couple ends to weave in. So all I'm going to do is slide this needle through the first two stitches on my double pointed needle. And then I'm going to put my needle back the opposite direction through the first stitch on the needle and slip it off. Okay, come back again, come through both stitches with my tapestry needle, go back through the first stitch in the opposite direction while I slide it off my needle. Okay, and this is creating a bind off edge and you can adjust the tension as you go to make sure that you have enough stretch on this. This is known as Elizabeth Zimmerman's sewn bind off and it looks a very great deal like a long tail cast on. But you can control the tension because you work each stitch one at a time and you can stretch it as you go. And we can see it's not going to look exactly like the bind off before but it'll be good enough and it'll give me enough space to have some stretch in the top of my sock. As I said, it's not ideal, but it's better than not being able to wear a sock that I spent all that time on. All right, I hope you've enjoyed these tips and tricks for fixing problems with your knitting. Come back and join me next time and we'll talk about knitting down to your toes and grafting the end of your sock shut. Happy knitting.